Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 snake myths. Now, I did only limit myself to 10 of these myths. There are a ton of them, but these are just 10 really common ones that I hear quite a bit. This is Bucky. He will once again be my co-host today. Look how chonky he is. That's a chonky boy. So the first one I want to talk about is the myth that whenever a snake is in that S shape, that means it might strike. Sometimes snakes just chill that way. Ball pythons, for example, a lot of times they'll just be chilling in that S shape, just kind of hanging out. Ball pythons are kind of weird like that. They'll just hang out in all kinds of different positions and they'll stay there for a long time. Now in the wild, if you see a snake curl up in that S shape, it might be a different story. If you see a snake curl up in that S shape while moving its whole body together and maybe wagging its tail acting like it's a rattlesnake or something. Oh. Overall, I would definitely say just because a snake is in an S shape doesn't mean it wants to harm you, it doesn't want to bite you or anything like that. It could mean that, but it doesn't for sure mean that. The next myth I want to talk about is the myth that snakes chase you. Snakes do not chase you, they don't want to chase you, they are not aggressive. Now snakes can be defensive, but not aggressive. If you walk up to a snake and you scare it, it might rear back, it might turn into that little S shape and act like it's big and bad, but really it's just defending itself. It's not aggressive and it's tr not trying to chase you. Now if you're out in the wild and you see a snake that may seem like it's chasing you, it's probably just trying to get away and hide. There may be some bushes, trees, logs, and different things behind you that the snake is trying to get to. But behind the snake, there might just be a field, so it feels like its only option is to go towards you. Snakes don't really look at humans as prey, so there's no reason for them to chase you unless they're being defensive or trying to get away, like I said, and trying to hide. If you're out in the wild, for example, and there's a snake nearby that sees you but you don't see it, it's not going to chase you. It's not going to go after you. If you step towards it and you get close to it, it may get defensive, but it's not going to aggressively go towards you and try to chase you or anything. People talk about this a lot when it comes to water moccasins, also known as a cotton mouth. They seem to think that a water moccasin is chasing them. It's really not. It's just trying to get away or it's just trying to be defensive. I can see how a water moccasin might seem kind of scary at first though whenever it opens its mouth like that and shows its white mouth. The next myth I want to talk about is that snakes are poisonous. Now for the most part, and when I say the most part, I mean 99% of the time, no, snakes are not poisonous, they are venomous. If they are venomous. The difference between poisonous and venomous is really pretty simple. So if you eat something and you die from the toxins inside of that animal, it's poisonous. If that animal bites you and you die because of the toxins that it injected into your body, it's venomous. Poison dart frogs, for example, are only poisonous in the wild whenever they consume things that are poisonous and then their skin becomes toxic. So if you ate a poison dart frog in the wild, it might harm you. But in captivity, they're not actually poison dart frogs, they're just dart frogs. With a snake, if you for whatever weird reason took a bite out of a snake, most of the time it's not going to hurt you. If certain snakes bite you though, it can hurt you because they're venomous. There are a couple of exceptions though. For example, there are some garter snakes in Oregon that eat poisonous newts and then they become poisonous. So if you ate that snake, it's considered a poisonous snake. Some garter snakes are rear fang venomous, so they have a very mild venom, but they're not harmful to humans. Red against black, okay jack. Red against yellow, he'll kill a fellow. Now there are different versions of this that we probably all heard as kids. Sometimes it's true, but it's not always necessarily true. Now the problem with this is the fact that these snakes have all kinds of different morphs, different colorations, different patterns, and so it's really hard to go by that rule. There are other snakes that have a red against yellow pattern. The shovel nose snake, for an example, has a red against yellow pattern but it's not venomous. Milk snakes and scarlet snakes a lot of the times will get mixed up with coral snakes. Now coral snakes are venomous, milk snakes and scarlet snakes are not. Like I said, there are a lot of different variations and colors and patterns, different morphs of milk snakes, so it's really hard to go by this rule. So the red against black, okay jack, 
red against yellow, kill a fellow, is not always true. Now the next myth I'll talk about is the myth that elliptical pupils mean a snake is venomous. Rattlesnakes, for example, do have elliptical pupils, and they are dangerous. But also, ball pythons, who are very much not dangerous, have elliptical pupils. There are different species of boas and other snakes that have elliptical pupils, and they are completely harmless. Coral snakes, cobras, and other elapid snakes have round pupils. So generally, you can't tell whether a snake is venomous or not venomous just based off their pupils. Snakes are not slimy. The only way a snake would really be slimy is if you pulled it straight out of a pond and it had moss all over it or something like that. They are pretty dry for the most part. Some people say that snakes are slimy and some snakes may look like they're slimy, but usually that's just because they have shiny skin. Now I've heard this myth a few times, I actually just heard it recently. Some people like to think that snakes size you up. No, a snake is not going to size you up, like I said, earlier, snakes do not look at you as prey. Snakes don't dislocate their jawbones because their jawbones aren't really fused together in the first place. Instead, the snake's jawbones are connected with ligaments that are very flexible. So when they're eating their prey items, snakes can actually expand their neck quite a bit to swallow whatever prey they're eating. There is a myth that goes around quite a bit that snakes that have V-shaped heads are venomous. A lot of times this may be true. Rattlesnakes, for example, have quite the V-shaped head and you can tell that they have venom glands. But this isn't always true because some snakes do push their head down and make it look bigger so they look like they're more intimidating and might be venomous. Water snakes, for example, get mixed up a lot with water moccasins or cotton mouths. And sometimes you'll see them with their head pushed down and it's shaped more like a V but if they raise their head up, it's a little more round. So when you look at a snake's head, don't assume it's venomous or not venomous just because of the shape. So you can't tell how old a rattlesnake is just based off of how many beads it has on its rattle. The reason why is because rattlesnakes shed several times a year, and each shed represents one bead on the rattle. So if a snake has seven beads on their rattle, that doesn't mean it's seven years old, it just means it's shed seven times. The thing is, rattlesnakes might shed two, three, or maybe even more times each year. So you really can't tell how old a rattlesnake is based off of the number of beads on its rattle. Also, some rattlesnakes can lose their rattles, so it's really hard to tell how old they are. If you like this video, hit that gosh darn like button, give me a little subscribe, give me a comment, whatever you, you know, whatever you want to do.